We're talking about a bold new year. We're in 2023. And, you know, God has so much more for you than you can imagine. And I know we have our dreams and we have visions and all that kind of thing, but he has so much more that he wants to accomplish in our lives. And I want us to just really today decide to deepen our dreaming and deepen what we're gonna believe God for this year, to not just believe for what we can accomplish, but believe what on, for what only God could accomplish. There's a big difference between those two things. I know it's easier to believe God for things that we know could happen, right? Well, you know, I know I'm up for possibly for a raise, so I'm gonna believe God for a raise. Well, that's great. But what if the fact that you're not up for a raise, there's no raise in sight, there's no promotion in sight, and you're gonna believe God for one now? right? It's so easy to believe God for what we know can be accomplished or what we could accomplish in our own strength. But I want to encourage you, let's start believing God for things that only God could accomplish. The things that are humanly impossible for us. To get past just our surface desires, the things like, hey, I want a new car, I want a new house. Those are great things. But why not start digging a little bit deeper and go in for what does God really want to accomplish in my life this year, okay? You know, I'm, I'm gonna steal a quote from Pastor Monica that she posted yesterday. Thank you. I didn't tell her I was stealing it. <laughs> Opportunity is defined as a set of circumstances that make it possible to do something. 2023 offers us 365 opportunities to shift the atmosphere and to do big things. Come on. Isn't that good? Place before us is not the opportunity to do one or two things or we have one year, one opportunity every single day to make a decision that today is an opportunity to believe God for something. You know, when you can break it down of what am I believing God for today? What am I going to dream today? And do that 365 times. Do you think that maybe God could do something ast absolutely astronomical this year? I believe he Amen. can. But um, we need to have greater boldness and realize God wants to take our desires and needs to him. Yeah. We don't need to quietly, I think too often we dream big and then we quietly wait for God to do it. No ouches, there's just no ouches at all. All right, there. let's go to 1 John 5, 14. But just a second, yeah. just a second. Right. I'm not gonna let them off, I'm not gonna let them off the hook asked. quite that fast. But we, we're gonna talk more a little bit about this, but we need to be bold enough to not just believe for it, but to actually ask for these things, right? God is a God of choice. The greatest gift he could ever give us is an eternity with him. Is that correct? But yet he does not force that on any one of us. He allows us to choose. He has so many blessings and so many miracles in store for you for 2023, but he will not force those on you. Even the greatest abundance, he will not force on you because he gives us choice. He's like, you want to live in poverty? That's your choice. Right. So what we need to do is participate with him and not just quietly wait for God to fulfill things, but to actually get involved in the process and start asking him. That sounds simple enough, but how many times have you guys been stuck in a situation and all of a sudden you realize... Wait, did, did I even actually ask God to get involved in that? Maybe I'm the only one who's ever done that, right? Because I know you guys probably, that's your first thing all the time. But, but how many times are we need something and it's like, oh, why didn't I just ask God for that? Okay, so we need to start asking him. Listen to 1 John 5, 14 in the Amplified Version. It says, this is the remarkable degree of confidence which we as believers are entitled to. Did you just hear what I said? You are how entitled to? have before him that if you ask anything according to his will that is consistent with his plan and his purpose he hears us now watch this you're entitled to come confidently to the throne room of god and you you can ask for whatever's in his will well what's in his will i said well the bible says that god's plans are to prosper you not to harm you and give you a hope and a future a beloved i wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers i could keep going and going and going with all the scriptures 
God's already promised them. So, but he says, if you come boldly to this throne room, he says, I'm happy to answer all those ones. I already told you I'm giving them to you. Oh, it's quiet in here. Well, is this a church that just believes in prosperity? No, I said, we believe in divine supernatural health and healing too. Come on, somebody. We believe that families, God's got an assignment for families to keep families healthy as well. See, God, God's not a one portion God. God is a fulfilling completion of our lives where there's lacking nothing in us, but the problem is we don't ask. And when we do, we're timid in asking. Well, I hope he's just not too busy. The Bible says, come confidently. And by the way, you're entitled to it. Act like a teenager coming home after school going to the fridge, especially a boy. They're not timid. You don't have to say make yourself at home. They do that and then bring three friends with them. Come on, somebody. Confident, bold faith combined with God's power can produce amazing results if the request is consistent with God's will. God is fully capable of doing things we view as impossible. The question is, do we dare to ask? Now, there is a disclaimer in here. It's got to line up with God's will. Right, we've had people go, hey man, those petition forms, that's really great. I asked that my girlfriend would leave her husband so we could get married. You know, like, okay, that's not what God is talking about here, okay? And so, if it lines up with God's will, right? So, but if he's putting a dream inside of your heart and you're spending time with him and you're, you're spending time reading his word and you're in the Bible and you're, you're spending time in prayer, he's going to direct the desires of your heart to be in line with him, Right? So as we can pray, we can pray with a confidence because too many people are scared. Well, what if, what if, I don't know, I don't know. Let's just confidently and boldly start praying for things that, that are in our hearts that God's been stirring up for a while. Now look at this. Um, God has created us to be driven people, to find ways to meet our own needs, to move ahead and to want to dream more. Okay? He's, he's put inside of us a drive, a drive not just to survive. Right? How many of you know we, there is an innate God-given drive in us to survive, right? We will, like your reflexes even. I mean, you can't control your reflex. If something's coming at your face, your, face, your hand's going up because there's something in you to protect yourself. But there's also something inside of us to succeed. Many times our experiences have damped that. It has tried to kill that in us and we need to get back to that, that God-given thing to, to succeed. But... There's a right way to do that, and there's a wrong way to do that, right? And so um, there are way, two, days, two ways to do it. And so we first of all want to look at James 4, 1 to 2 to show us what's the right way and what's the wrong way. It says, what is the cause of your conflicts and quarrels with, you, the, which, with each other? Doesn't the battle begin inside of you as you fight to have your own way and fulfill your own desires? You jealously, you jealously want what others have, so you begin to see yourself as better than others. You scheme with envy and harm others to selfishly obtain what you crave. That's why you quarrel and fight, and all the time you don't obtain what you want because you don't ask God for it. In other words, if we just go after it in our own ability, in our own level, let me just tell you how good I am at such and such, and I'm going to get to this, and I'm going to accomplish this. And what happens is you get into the flesh, and then you start stepping on people's lives, and you're just climbing the corporate ladder. If somebody's in the way, you just rip them off the corporate ladder and keep going up. Now, the problem is, that's how the world does it. The problem with God is like, Hey, you got to help other people up the ladder yourself. You know, because God says, what you sow, that shall you also. If you're helping somebody else up the ladder, come on, how do you think yours is going to go too? Somebody's going to help you up the ladder. See, for a lot of times we miss this, and this internal conflict starts, and well, I don't know why he's got such a great marriage. That's not fair. I got a defective one. Now, I'm not saying that I got a defective one. I want to just use this as an example. You better not be. I have the best wife around the just woman saying. of my dreams. Are you with me? But I'm just giving you an example how people will say, well, I just don't think that's fair. 
Or somebody gets ahead financially, huh, I wonder what they did to get that. And we, instead of celebrating with people, when they do, when God blesses them, we get an attitude. Oh, it's quiet in here. You know, the Bible says rejoice with those that rejoice. Uh, I'm just throwing it out there. I tell people, if your mom's still alive, I said on one hand, you can usually count of five people that you can call, your mother being one of them, if something good happens in your life, because not everybody's happy to hear about it. Come on, church, we have to change and be different than that. We need to celebrate with people when God does good things in their life. Amen. That internal struggle, it'll exhaust you because it's in your own strength, it's in your own perception, it's in your own drive, and that can exhaust you. So the wrong way to do it is through your own ambition and your own drive. The right way to do it is to ask God for what you desire and allow him to help you get there, to work with God. You know, the interesting thing is the scripture, nothing is impossible with God. Too many of us have interpreted that to be nothing is impossible for God. But it actually says nothing is impossible with, with, with God, which means it's a partnership of you and him. And there's this fine line because we are a strong church of faith and we believe God for some pretty big, huge, amazing things and we see God do some pretty big, huge, amazing things, right? But there's this fine line we have to learn to balance between faith and works where we, we believe God to do his part, but we still have to make sure we do our part. Many times it's easy to go, okay, look, that's just so big, I can't even accomplish that, so I'm not even going to touch it. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to wait for God to do it. But yet, the Bible says, having done all else, stand. So have you done all else? Have you spoken what you're supposed to speak? Have you done your preparation in your heart? Have you prayed what you're supposed to pray? Have you done the preparation work you're supposed to do? There's a fine line. Of, of making sure we don't do it ourselves and get ahead of God, but making sure we're doing it with God. Now, example is, is Kenya. I remember the first time four and a half, four years ago, I guess five years ago now, God told me to go to Kenya, do a conference there. I'm like, I just said yes. I had no hot clue how we were gonna do that. Never been to Kenya. Didn't know how we were gonna get there, how we were gonna finance it. Didn't know what it was gonna look like. I just knew I said yes. But now I could believe God going, hey, I don't know how that's going to happen, so I'm just going to let you do that. But that doesn't work because now I have to plan a conference there. I have to get in cooperation with God. Do I know where all the finances are going? No, but I'm starting, okay, God, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to plan for this? You know, I have to find the flights. I have to find the hotels. There are things we have to do in that process. Right now, uh, we're going to be there in May. Some massive, huge countrywide national doors have opened for us. But we're planning a 2024 meeting in Kenya for in the center of Nairobi for all denominations, all pastors in one, one meeting at one time with thousands of pastors in attendance. Well, this thing's gonna cost me probably $150,000. And last time we were there, God told me that's what you need to do and bus pastors in from the, the corners, rent the convention center. It's like, okay, God. And I told, I said, this is what we got to do. We're going to do it. Do I know where those funds are coming from? No, but I know they're coming. But in the meantime, I'm putting committees together in Africa. We're having meetings when I'm there in May. We're planning. We're looking for the locations. We're booking things, right? Because we still have a part to play in that. I'm looking to foundations for funding. I'm doing all the things. We still have to be in participation with the dreams that God's got for you. Some of us have stopped letting, being in participation because it seems so big and you gave up. Ooh. We need to be in participation with uh, the uh, dreams. Actually, let me throw something in because this last Chi event that we did here uh, in Florida, Joanne said this year, we're, we're just gonna have the sponsors help support this and the sponsors cover the, their bills, but nothing was taken up. And when she took up one offering, it was a really small offering. And I looked at her and I said, Maybe you should have charged admission. Come on, somebody. I'm the business guy. I'm the one that runs the books. Are you with me? Well, I run the books. I do the books. Well, you run the books, yeah. but I'm saying yeah. in general, I run the financial stuff. <laughs> and she says, don't worry, God's got it. 
I said, okay, well, I'm in agreement with you, honey. And then all of a sudden, a month later, somebody sends 3,000, and then somebody that out of, from out of town, then somebody else from out of town just sent 5,000. Mm. Come on, somebody. If God's in it, he's going to take care of it. He'll speak to people mm. in the middle of the night in a different state, and they'll, they'll be obedient. They'll just write a check. Uh, I'm just throwing it out there. I mean, are we restrained to who we know and who we can influence or do we just let God do his thing and work supernaturally? You know, if you want natural results, you don't need God. If you want supernatural results, you got no choice. You got to stick close. If you can do it in your own ability, don't bother asking God for it if you're thinking too small. But when it's way over your head and you're thinking, my God, how am I ever going to get there? How is this going to work? How do I, hey, hey, ha, 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 he, he, come on. When you get to that point, you're in the right place because God says, good, now it's my turn to step in and put my super on your natural and we'll see some supernatural results. Amen. See, God is with you in partnership. Amen. But we need to make sure we're yeah. staying in line with him. Don't do more than he's asking you to do, but make sure you are doing what he's asking you to do, okay? Philippians um, 3, 12 to 14, because what we want, we want to ask big, bold things this year, but in doing that, we need to be forward-looking, okay? Forward-looking. So I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with a passion into his abundance. I love this. I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose for which Christ Jesus laid hold of me to make his own. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. There's a couple things I want to pull out of here. One, don't get stuck in the disappointment of delays. I have to keep reminding myself that. Yeah, especially last year. Two years yeah. we've been waiting for our building. Don't get stuck in the disappointment of delays, okay? We cannot get stuck in, yeah, but I tried that, God. I was believing for you to do that this past year, and it didn't happen, and the year before that, and the year before that. Do not get stuck in the disappointment of a delay, right? Here, what does it say? I forgot that past. I'm gonna forget the past. I'm gonna forget all the times like, that word didn't come true for me or that dream didn't come true. And instead, what does it say here? He says, instead of the past, focus on his abundance. Run to that. Run to his abundance. Run to the provision of the dream. Run into what he does have for you instead of what didn't work in the past. Right? Amen. Now look at this. Lean into his strength this year. Trust his ability and not your own to bring your dream to pass. This is where it gets good because if you do it in your own strength, you're going to be exhausted. You're going to be worn out and you're wondering why it's not going to happen. When you lean into him and go, okay, God, I'm willing to do this with you. It's going to be scary. I don't even know what it's all about, but you're going to show me step by step and you're going to show me exactly. And his super goes on your natural. Then it gets good. Yeah. And the problem with doing it with God he generally doesn't give you the whole plan up front. You know, when you start a business, they say you have to put out the business plan and you, you write out all the details for the next five years. Well, God tends to just give you little bits and pieces and gives you just what you need for the first step. Breadcrumbs. And it's like, God, could you just think, can you just expand that just a little bit? Right? And it's like a GPS where he just gives you the first, but he doesn't give you the overall view. He tells you where you're going, but then you got to take step by step. But we got to trust him in that because as he does that, he's going to empower you. And then you don't get overwhelmed because I know for me, I would get so overwhelmed if he gave me every single step I have to walk yeah. to over the next year. Yeah. Let's just deal with today, okay? <laughs> Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, it says, stop dwelling on the past. Don't even remember these former things. I am doing something brand new, something unheard of. Even now, it sprouts and grows and matures. Don't you perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and open up flowing streams in the desert. See, when we see how God operates, it doesn't fit our process of thinking. Let's be honest. 
You're going to do hey, hey, and then well, and then and, uh, and then you're going, oh boy, that's like a little over my head. That's a that's like carrying a ten thousand pound weight and trying to get across the finish line. Come on, somebody. But when you realize it's not your strength to carry that ten thousand weight pound weight across the finish line, it's his, and you're just keeping it balanced for him. It's no problem. See, when we, when we see it in our own ability, we, we always look back at our past. Well, I did that before and I failed. I did that before and it didn't work out. I, my mom told me I would never add up. My teachers told me it would never be good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not the best looking in the class. I don't have the best complexion. I'm too short. I'm too tall. I'm too fat. I'm too skinny. Come on, somebody. And you were made in the likeness and image of God. God says, what are you making excuses for? Let's go. Come on. Come on with your dysfunctional self. Pick yourself up and let's go. We're going to do something big. I'm going to show this dysfunctional world how I can take dysfunctional people, put my glory on them, and do something supernatural. Just a thought to throw out there. We need to be believing God for some big things. If we're not believing God for something, we're going to be going backwards. Right? We have to keep our believing, our faith active, believing God for big things. Um, you know, the good news is all we have to do is be obedient to go after it. Be obedient to do what he's asking us to do when you don't understand what the big picture always is. He'll take care of the obstacles. That's the great thing. Because many of us don't even start because we can see a thousand obstacles in the way. Let God deal. If this is his and it's his strength, let him deal with the obstacles. You just be part of the obedience. Doesn't that make it so much simpler? Okay. Now I want you to look at this. How do we do this? Well, let's, let's start with just petitioning God and believing him for it. P- Philippians, Philippians 4, 4 6, 6 to 7. We're going to just fight over this. Are you so I'm going to do it. Yeah. Are you on okay, camera? Uh, Go ahead, sweetheart. Be, thank you. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. You know, too many times we let the world overwhelm us and real, instead of realizing that God has a way for us to come to him and give him the issues of life. And that's by asking him. And one of the things we have here at the church, and you should all have one in the handout you got. If not, you can raise your hand because you're all going to have to participate today. <laughs> we all love participation. These are called petition forms. Okay? And if you don't have one, just raise your hand, and I'm going to get some ushers to, to bring them out. Now, first that, of all, can I just throw this I, out? They're not going to hand these in. This is between you and yes, God. Yes, I was just going to explain all that. All right, go ahead, sweetheart. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> You see, when we, this, we stumbled upon this, he stumbled upon this with a couple guys where they just started writing down their prayer requests. If you don't have one, raise your hand because I want every person to, raise, to have one or as a couple, you could do it as a couple together. But um, when, and in Canada, do this. If you're at home, just grab a piece of paper. But they would start writing things down, praying over them and start seeing God do all these supernatural things. And many times what we have found is we need a tool to give things to God and let go of them, right? Too many times we'll ask God for something and then we keep worrying about it and we keep stressing about it. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna write those things on this paper, those things you need God to do in your life. And then what we're gonna do is by writing it down, we're gonna pray over them at the end of the service. And as he said, you keep these, keep them. This will be your testimony. A year from now, you overlook, you look over this and you see how many miracles happened, right? Be, be bold enough. What, what do you need in your family? What do you need in your finances? What do you need in your ministry? What do you need in your health? Write it down. And I'm telling you, we've had so many people tell us, you know, I remember last year we made you do this as well. And someone here was like, you know what, we've never, they were looking for a vehicle and needed this really badly and finally decided to write it down. And within days, they got this like crazy supernatural deal. Someone just shared with me a few weeks ago, they needed new tires for their vehicle, wrote it down on a petition and got this amazing like blow away deal where even the dealer was like, how in the world did you find that? That's impossible, 
right? So we've had other people who were for years were praying about an issue, praying about an issue, praying Restoring about an issue. Restoring families. Yeah and, yeah, and they write it down, and all of a sudden, within days, it comes to pass. Why? Because it's a tangible way to enact faith in your life, to hand it over to God, and then, you know what? Where two or more agree touching anything, it'll be done for them. So at the end of the service, when we get in together in prayer, in agreement, we're agreeing with you, even when we don't know what it is. If it lines up with God's will for your life, we're in agreement with you and the power of God goes into work. I can't even tell you how many miracles we've seen out of these things. So that's what we're gonna do. You know, God can do anything, but he wants his words to align with your words. This is really important for us to understand this. Proverbs 18, 21 says, your words are so powerful that they can kill or give life and a talkative person will reap the consequences. You know, what happens a lot of times is we rehearse and we talk about all of our problems. When you mutter, you never mutter positively. Well, let me try this side over here. God is so good, oh my goodness. My I said, when you mutter, you don't mutter positively. You're muttering about what didn't happen. <laughs> now watch this. You have what you say. It's interesting, I was just with one of our staff and I was just saying, man, 22 was a year from, come on somebody. It was a fight, everything we did was a fight. The person looked at me and they said, is, is that what you wanted? It's okay to get corrected even when you know what's wrong and you say the wrong thing. Come on, God is still a God of mercy and grace. Don't look at me at this those religious eyes. Well, I can't believe. Listen, you're going to say something and do something too. When you're in the middle of a battle, sometimes you don't see the end goal. You're just fighting to get through. Are you with me? Your marriage is going through a difficult season and you're just trying to fight through to keep this marriage together. Your finances are going through. And sometimes when you get to the outside, you will speak things that are happening to you, not what you want. That's why it's important for us to have a 2023 declaration and write down what we want and be specific about it and come to God and say, okay, God, now it's time to shift how we've done things before to see new things happen. Behold, new things are happening in 23. Somebody catch that? <laughs> this is important. Well, are you just saying you're just going to, yeah, that's exactly what the Bible says. Well, why do you have petition forms? I said, because they work. Come on, we're not that smart. Follow the word. Prayer, petition, thanksgiving, make your request known. Are you anxious about something in your life? If you're anxious about it, you're not trusting God. Write it down on paper. Give it to him. Watch what he supernaturally starts to do. He goes, finally, they gave it to me. It's been only how many years? I know this woman, she came to me and she says, you know, uh, for two, three years, I'm trying to get a hold of my son. She had one son and she had no relationship with him. And she says, I've been sitting in the church for five years. And she says, and I'm looking at these petition forms. And finally, she says, you're three. I thought, well, what the heck? I might as well just write it down that I get a relationship back with my son. That service, we prayed over the, over the petitions as we do every service. Within two hours, the phone rang. She's now in back in relationship with her kid. So don't tell me it doesn't work. I've, I've, we've seen miracle after miracle after miracle, whether it's been financial, emotional, spiritual, relational, add them all up. God just shows up and starts showing up. Why? Because he told us to do it this way. You don't need to fix something that's not, doesn't need fixing in the word of God. Just do what it says and you'll get the results. Mm -hmm. I want to read you a scripture, 1 Timothy 1.19. It says, with this encouragement, use your prophecies as weapons as you wage spiritual warfare by faith and with a clean conscience. Use your prophecies as weapons. Uh, that's what I want us to do this year. What, so what does it mean? I want us to go into this year to really take the dream that God's given you. Let's take that word that God gave you. Let's take that, that thing within your heart, that scripture verse, that, that promise of God that's in the Bible for you. I want you to take that and use it as a weapon this year to fulfill what God is trying to do in your life. But I want you to look at this to explain what prophecy means. Prophecy is what God has spoken. 
to your spirit or through his word, which is the Bible? What has God spoken to you about your future, about your situation? What has God's word said about your situation? Use that as your weapon to go boldly into this year. I want you to take, there's that scripture that God's put in your heart or for a situation, or if you don't have that, get one of our promise books. Um, They're in our gift bags. Get that and, and start using that. You know, we've had some, like we've literally had hundreds of prophetic words over our, our the ministry and over our lives. And we use those in our prayer of going and of a declaring and speaking that that is what's happening. We have a very prophetic church, right? Especially over this last year, the words and the prophetic that have been coming out and even specifically to people, use those as your weapon going into this year of you said, God, that this was gonna happen. You know, about, um, I think it was about a year and a half ago, he spoke a word and um, specifically to a couple. And they said they took that prophetic word and would listen to it every day. They, w- they would just listen to it every single day. Every morning, that's what they would start and get in agreement with it and use it as their weapon going into their thing, into their day. Well, you know, within a couple weeks, it started all manifesting. Within a few months, their business started exploding this thing now in the in a within a year time went like off the charts crazy amazing from zero to global in less than a year how many yeah. things that, that could be god but Just they took it that they took that word of god and yeah. so take what god is speaking to you. it whether it's a prophetic word or whether it's a scripture verse or whatever it else take it but write it down let's because we need to start believing god for some things what is it you're believing god for what scripture is it you're believing god for write it down let's get serious about it but remember to put god in the middle of all of it right none of this makes and it doesn't help at all if we only do it for our own selfish desire and then leave God out of it. Big dreams that God can get involved in are dreams where God gets the glory, where God is involved, where lives are being impacted and touched and changed. Those are the kind of dreams. You know, is it okay to be, is it, is it a good dream to be debt free? Absolutely, you know why? Because it gives God glory and then it frees up more finances for you to be able to put into the kingdom of God, right? Is it okay to believe God for a new house? Yes, because guess what? God doesn't want his kids living in poverty because you're his ambassadors. But is it okay just to believe God for mansions and forget about what God's trying to do? No. So is he in the middle of what we're believing God for? You know, fasting is a great way to focus on what God is saying. And through the month of January, we encourage uh, the church to take some time and see what you can do to in your in your in this month of January what can you fast now some people get can fast the whole meals and go all the time but others if you're working a physical job you can't do that but maybe you can fast one meal a day maybe you can fast your favorite dessert or, or even say coffee now I you I could get hurt saying stuff that like could, that here that could be hurting <laughs> yeah but there's something that maybe that you can fast and give up and what that does is that allows you to tune into God a little more clearly and lets you start to get the get the junk from last year flushed out of your system if you want to call it that way and lets you start to hear and see what God wants to take because God is very personal he what he's going to do for one person he's going to do different for somebody else and that's okay See, God knows exactly the desires of your heart because he gave them to you. And what he's put in as a desire of your heart, he wants to fulfill it. He wants to show up in your life and in my life and start to fulfill those things. You know, we never really started fasting until we um, started the church. And God called us to fast that first year when we started the church. And I would always get headaches when I fasted. and, And we came up with a thousand reasons of why not to fast, right? We can all come up with a lot of reasons, right? Because fasting, who wants to do that? Like, yuck. But God showed us something in scripture. Jesus, whenever he talked about fasting, he never said, if you fast. He always said, when you fast. Always, always, when you fast. And would give us instructions. 
And what we found is we did that first fast and yeah, it was painful. Yeah, we were hungry. Yeah, we were miserable during it, but we had the greatest breakthroughs of our lives after that fast. Why? Because we were putting God first. What we were doing is we were killing our flesh and our fleshly desires in order to seek after a godly desire, to know Him more. Now, are we manipulating God with our fasting? No, not at all. But what we're doing is we're taking time to make our physical desires die, right? When you're hungry and you're telling your body, you, sh you know, you, you shut up. I'm gonna tune in instead of eating right now, I'm gonna spend some time in prayer. I'm gonna spend time in some worship right now. I'm gonna spend some time in reading my Bible instead. I, I hunger for God more than I hunger for food. It's just a realignment. And when we do that, it's amazing what he does. It's amazing what he can speak to us. It's amazing the breakthrough when we take that time to just realign. And what better time than at the beginning of the year? You know, at the, um, at the back, we have these fasting tip sheets um, to help you just better understand what it is, how to begin. Some of you, as I said, maybe it's you eat one meal a day. Maybe you skip one meal a day. I encourage you, if you've never, ever fasted before, don't go on a water fast for 40 days. That's not <laughs> encouraging. But maybe it's you have to fast an activity of something. Maybe you're going to fast TV for the month. I encourage it to be something that's going to cost you food or something that actually hurts to give up. Um, and do it for a week, a few days, whatever the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to tell you how to do this. You pray. You see how the Holy Spirit leads you to do something through this month. But um, also on Tuesdays from 6.30 to 7.30, come and pray with us. Just down the hall in the chapel. Come pray with us. Be part of this. Like, let's really start this year off right. But I want to end with this. Psalm 20, verse 4 to 5. May he grant your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy when we hear of your victory and raise a victory banner in the name of our God. May the Lord answer all your prayers. Amen. 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 I want to give you an opportunity right now to make sure your life is right with the Lord. So whether you're in this auditorium here or you're on in the Winnipeg campus, you're in Kenya, or you're just watching online, I want, to, I want you to know that if something happened to you tonight, that heaven would be your home. That, that's making sure that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. All of the promises we talked about are for the benefits for the family of God. And how do you become part of the family? Just ask him into your life. There's no 300 steps that you and I have to go through. You can come with broken issues in your life and your life not working properly. And God says, I'm good with that. Just come as you are and let God start to work on your life. But I'm going to pray a prayer here in a moment. And if that's you, just say to God, that's me. And in saying that, we're going to say this, out, this prayer out loud. So wherever you are in this campus, Winnipeg, online, say this out loud wherever you are. Believe it as you say it, and God will change your life. And it's a powerful but simple prayer. And it goes like this. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. I ask that you forgive me. I ask that you forgive me. Come into me. my life. Into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my Savior. And help me to live for you. And help me to live for you. Every day of my life. Every day of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.